You should bottle whatever you guys do here in, in uh, Memphis and export it to other cities. Hmm. The artesian well water. Is that what it is? <laughs> the artesian well water. Okay, I'll have two gallons, please. You don't want that. Trust Can me. I open us up in prayer? Yes. yes. I'm going to start us with a word of prayer. So awesome. people will know immediately whether or not they're going to go, oh, he's praying. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you for another day of life. Every one of us went to bed last night, closed our eyes with the full expectation of waking up this morning. And yet we are not promised that. We did not earn that. We have no right to that. It is a gift. So I want to thank you and on behalf of everyone here, Thank you for another day of life. Thank you that the sun rose this morning and our eyes opened and we are here to experience another day of life. I pray that you would bless all the people in the gaming room right now. They're <laughs> making all those, playing all those loud games. <laughs> that, uh, that we will have a good day here in this room that we'll be able to uh, chat about some things that that maybe can encourage someone in this room in some way. Thank you for every person here. No matter why they're here, it doesn't matter. The why doesn't matter. If they're here because they like Oran High School Host Club, that's <laughs> awesome. And if they're here because they've been awake all night, there's nowhere else to go right now. That's awesome. If they're here because their friend made them come with them, that's awesome. Of course. If they're here because they like my puffy hair, that's just fine too. I am just so grateful, Lord, for the opportunity to share with, with everyone here. So I pray that you would help me to get out of the way. I used to go to a church where a pastor used to end every prayer with help me to get out of, get me out of the way so that your word and your truth can be heard and understood. So I ask you to do that right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You know, guys, I do these so often that I, I get afraid hmm. the night before and the morning of because I'm like, well, what am I going to talk about? Like, what do I say that I haven't said? You know? Mm -hmm. Especially if I'm at an event that I've been at before. And I'm always like, oh, like what if people come that have been, that I've been at events before, and they're like, oh, he's just saying the same thing over and over again. I don't, you know, there's a little bit of, I don't want that. I don't want them to think that I'm just like, I just kind of repeat the same thing, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And yet, the message is poignant, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I did have some new things I'm going to share, though. Like I said, I kind of really agonized about this. First thing I'm going to do, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm going to read what I got today in my devotional. We'll read it together, okay. and we'll see if it if it touches anybody. Now, I want you to know right off the bat, if you, how many of you have never been to to like one of these Sunday morning things that I do? Oh, that's good. That's really good, because then I'm not so afraid to say the same thing over and over again. <laughs> so maybe I'll repeat myself. And those of you that have been to one can hopefully give me a little grace. <laughs> okay, I don't even know what this says yet completely. I started to read it, I'm like, that seems okay. <laughs> so we're gonna find out together what this says, all right? Okay, here we go. Today's devotion, the title is, Let God Be God. Hmm. Let's see what that means. It takes a long time for us to allow God to be who God really is. Our national egocentricity wants to make God into who we want God to be. The role of prophets and good theology is to keep people free for God and to keep God free for people. While there are some pure of heart people, see Matthew 5, 8, mm -hmm. 
who come to see God naturally and easily, most of us need lots of help. If God is always mystery, then God is always in some way unfamiliar. Beyond what we're used to, beyond our comfort zone, beyond what we can explain or understand. In the fourth century, St. Augustine said, if you comprehend it, it's not God. Oh, let's sit on that one for a minute. That's kind of cool. If you get it, it's probably not, you know what I mean? That's pretty amazing. Because, you know, a lot of people, let me just pause there for a minute. A lot of people, and me included, by the way, I'm in the same boat with you, okay? Can we just start from right there? Okay. I am no better than anybody. I'm no smarter than anybody. I get so crazy with celebrities who somehow think because they're freaking actors that they're smarter than people. Hmm. And they should tell you, you know, what you think about things. They're actors. They're not, they're no different or smarter than anybody. I'm no smarter than you. I'm no better than anybody. And, and, I, and, and I remember thinking, and all of us, I think, have struggled with this before. People have a tendency to want to contain God. God. I mean, it's a pretty big word. And yet, how often do people refer to him as, you know, the man upstairs, right? Mm -hmm. The big boss, the big honcho, the big man, right? Mm -hmm. He's not a big man. He is so other than man, than us. And I think people have a desire to try to contain, you know, and, and, and to control. We all want to control, right? We want to control things in our lives. And I think, I think that's where a lot of that comes from. Because God is so much bigger than anything we can imagine. And I just want you to hear me, guys. I'm not talking about the Catholic God, or the Baptist God, or the Presbyterian God. I'm not talking about churchy God. I'm not talking about white robe God. I'm not talking about hymnal God, or stained glass God. Those are all things that people made up. Hmm. Long before there was any of that, there was just God, the bee. And if you hear nothing else I share with you today, he wants a relationship with you. And it's not predicated upon what church you attend. And it's not predicated upon what color hair you have. And it's not predicated upon mistakes you've made in the past. And guess what? Not predicated on mistakes you will make in the future. That's all covered. He knows about all that. You know why? Because he's not the big man upstairs. He's God. Who is beyond our comprehension. If you can define it and figure it out and work it, if I, let me put it on me, because I don't want anyone to think I'm putting you down. If I can define and figure out, figure it all out in my dumb little pea brain, human mind, it isn't God. Hmm. <laughs> He's way bigger than I'm ever going to be able to understand. And that's a really good starting point. But the good news is that that big, huge God that, won't, that is always in some way mystery, that is not containable, loves you. That's the, the good news. He doesn't want to crush you. He doesn't want to steal your joy or rob you of, 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 of your life or your enthusiasm. He loves you. And that's the good news. Now I got distracted, so I'm going to get back to my... My devotion. Okay, let's continue reading. I'm going to political or security. The first commandment, Exodus 20, 2 through 5 of the Ten Commandments, says that we are not supposed to make any graven images of God or worship them. At first glance, we may think this means only handmade likenesses of God. But it mostly refers to rigid images of God that we hold in our heads. God created human beings in God's own image. And we've returned the compliment, so to speak. Hmm. That was interesting. Remember, I'm just reading this too. Hmm. 
by creating, we've returned the compliment, compliment, so to speak, by creating God in our image. In the end, we produced what was typically a small, clannish God who looks like Santa Claus or an exacting judge or a win-lose businessman. Hmm. Interesting, which I didn't even know that was coming, but he's kind of talking about like the images that we create mm -hmm. of what we think God is, big puffy white beard, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever. Normally we find it very difficult to let God be greater than our culture, our immediate needs, and our projections. The human ego wants to keep things firmly in its grasp. So we've created a God who fits into our small systems and our understanding of God. Thus we've produced a God who requires expensive churches and roads. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting thought. A God who likes to go to war just as much as we do. A domineering God because we like to dominate. We've almost completely forgotten and ignored what Jesus revealed about the nature of the God he knew. If Jesus is the, quote, image of the invisible God, which it says in Colossians, then God is nothing like we expected. Jesus is in no sense a potentate or a patriarch, but the very opposite. The one whom John the Baptist calls the Lamb of God. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, by the way, that's not the Bible. That's a guy. It's mm -hmm. a guy like you or me who writes his thoughts. But I believe in my, I believe this. And again, I'm not pushing this on you. I'm just sharing with you. The purpose of this panel is to share with you what I believe. If you, if it doesn't, resonate with you, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to share with you what I believe. I believe that the Holy Spirit, that God's Spirit, that remember, you know how, Bible, how the Bible says that we are made in God's image, right? Mm -hmm. it, I, what I mean, what I think that means is that there is a piece of the divine in all of us. That there is a sense of eternity. There is a soul in all of us. Now, we may not quite know what it is. We may... You know, we, we struggle to kind of define it and to figure it out. And to, what does that mean? But we all think about things like forever and what's after this. And we all, I believe, no matter what we say with our mouths, mm -hmm. I believe that we all have a sense in our soul that there is a God and I'm not him <laughs> and you're not him. Right. And that... You were made for something bigger. Would anyone be willing to kind of agree that, yeah, I, I felt that. Mm -hmm. You just know. You know what I mean? You just sense it. Mm -hmm. You don't even know what that is. You can't define it, but you just know. You're not just a little glob of flesh floating around. Mm -hmm. You just know you're not. But there are so many conflicting voices that come at us from every different angle that it's really hard to, to hear that quiet, still voice, mm -hmm. that inner voice. So I, I say that to say that even though this guy, you know, this guy, he's a, he's a Catholic um, Franciscan monk, and I get these I get these uh, things every day. And sometimes they resonate with me and sometimes they don't. You know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Like he's just a guy. Mm -hmm. Like he what, he, what he writes or what he proposes is not, you know, the absolute biblical truth, or, you know, mm -hmm. you know, unchangeable, un, unarguable, you know, you can't challenge it. But if he says something that touches you, you know what I mean? If he says something, if, if I read something there, or if I read something in the morning, tomorrow morning, something in my soul goes, ooh, yeah, mm -hmm. I feel that. I see that. Like the one thing that he said, you know, 
um, when he quoted Augustine. And he said, if, it's, if you can figure it out, it's not God. Hmm. Now that touched me. This guy, he doesn't have to be any smarter than any of us. But if God uses him to say something that resonates with you, then good. It doesn't mean that every single thing should be taken, you know, word for word that this guy writes or I say. If I were to stand up here and say, the sky is blue. Okay. <laughs> You're all like, yeah, 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 it is. That's mm -hmm. true. I'm, I'm into that. Mm -hmm. But then if I said, and I am bald. Okay. You're like, eh, not on board with that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Some, yeah. When people speak to you about something of importance, especially, in my opinion, when it comes to spiritual matters, I believe that that, that peace of God that is in everybody senses whether something is true or not. Mm -hmm. And God's spirit resonates with God's words. Does that make sense? Like there's a kind of a connection. And you just, you, you kind of have a sense when you hear something that seems right to you. That makes sense. What I wanted, so I just read that. That was its own thing. Now we're gonna shift gears. Um, that was a little morning devotion. Mm -hmm. um, I think what I wanted to share with you guys today was an Alcoholics Anonymous um, concept. They say this all the time, and I really like it, and I think you will too. I'm going to read a passage of scripture, okay? Uh, the Apostle Paul, you guys know who that is? Mm -hmm. Paul was a man who wrote a large portion of the New Testament. Mm -hmm. He wrote a lot of those letters with all those fancy names. Remember those? Mm -hmm. Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Well, Thess Thessalonians, those were just the people that lived in a Greek city called Thessalonica. Mm -hmm. And the book of Colossians was just written to the people, the Christians that lived in Colossae. And the book of Philippians was written to the people that lived in Philippi. Guess where the book of Romans was written to? Romans. <laughs> See what I'm going? I, 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 I know that some people are like, where the, what the world's at? Where, the, where do those words come from? They were just the group of believers in Jesus that lived in these cities. And Paul would write them letters to encourage them or help them or admonish them in some way. So this is from a book that he wrote to the little city of Philippi, okay? We're in the third chapter, and this is what Paul says. And I'm going to read it from the King James Version first. And then I'm going to read it from another version because I love the other version too. I grew up on the King James, okay? Nothing wrong with that. Right. But a lot of people are kind of put off by the flowery, you know, fancy language. And sometimes the truth doesn't quite come through as clearly as it might. So I'm going to read it in the King James Verse. Here it comes, right? Mm -hmm. 